more detail, but tonight we're drawing mandalas. So um, what I love about the mandala is how meditative it is. And I, if you know me and you've been to my workshops before, um, I used to teach a mandala workshop called Mandalas in Movement. Um, so the surprise tonight was the mandala, because I know we can't get together physically, but at least I can give you something that will help you get through these times um, of isolation and um, not being social while you're staying home. So thanks for joining me with Haley from home. And I'm going to start showing you what supplies we're using. So the first supply was a flat edge. And sorry, my cat's on the table. <laughs> um, I have a ruler just because I have a lot of art supplies at home. So I have a ruler, but if you don't have a ruler, take a piece of paper and look how I folded it up. And this is just scrap paper. Um, and try to fold it up so at least one edge is really firm. So you can take a pencil and draw on that edge. So you need a flat edge. And then you'll need three circle shapes. So because I have art supplies at home, I have a printed protractor that I put on cardstock. If you want to print a protractor to get a little more specific to help you with mapping out this mandala, it's on the link in my bio. Um, and you can take a moment to print that now. We're not going to get to the protractor part yet. So I have a protractor. This whole thing you can eyeball. Um, and then the three circle shapes. So I have a plate. I have a bowl. I have a ramekin. And I have an Easter egg for the middle circle. So I said three, but I actually meant four. But you can kind of eyeball the middle one. So, we're going to start getting, getting into it. And if you need to grab those plates or anything, I have about 30 seconds while I pan over to my paper. So, Michael's going to pan over. Thanks, Michael. Also, grabbing my glass of wine. We all know how important that is. And we're going to get started. So, you have a blank piece of paper, and I want you to take the biggest circle that you have. So, from, remember... And we're gonna put the, and some people have gotten really creative. Also, this is a mandala that I did before. And um, so you can see I have that big circle here, another circle here, another circle, and there's where that Easter egg would be. And then I kind of just improved this final circle. Um, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to make a moving repetitive pattern. But what I want you to do is think about where you wanna put your circle. I've seen people get really creative and they've started their circle here and kind of bloomed a mandala out that way. I'm going to be a little more straightforward tonight and just put my circle. So remember, this is where you would put your plate. So if you have a plate, thank you mom for these amazing Pier 1 plates. Um, you're going to put a plate here and trace a perfect circle in the middle of your paper. So this is, I'm probably not going to use the bowl and the ramekin for the next two circles because I'm upright. but. So you're putting a perfect circle, and then actually I have to use the bowl and the ramekin. <laughs> I think I challenged myself to do that with you tonight. So I want you to start with a perfect circle in the middle of your paper, all right? And y'all can see the circle okay? All right, good. Then you're going to take your middle circle and line them up. So you want to have three, I suggest having a small little space in the middle. Remember, Easter egg. Middle circle, go ahead and map it out. Try to, try to eyeball it. Don't worry about it being perfect. I mean, that's where your protractor comes in handy, but I'm going to kind of eyeball the middle. And again, if y'all hear Jean-Pierre and Ellie meowing, they're apparently we are, we have been home way too much for them in their house. So they're probably going to be meowing. Um, and then I'm going to take my ramekin and make another circle. So we've done the big circle the middle circle, and now we're doing a kind of small medium circle. Oh, I forgot that about the ramekin, that they have these kind of ribbed edges, but that's okay, that'll make it interesting. And then some people eyeball, if you wanna use a quarter, you can, but I'm gonna take that Easter egg, so it kinda of opens up. If you have one of those lying around, I know Easter is tomorrow, and we're going to draw the middle circle. So again, it's not, Perfect. Um, I just want to teach you the foundation so when you do this again, you can make it perfect. Here's where the protractor comes in handy. Remember, if you don't have a protractor, you can just eyeball it. Um, it's not going to be like meticulously perfect, but um, it's really, again, once you learn how to do this and you've downloaded a protractor, then you can make it kind of perfect. So Without a protractor, what we're doing is we're cutting our circle in half. So we're drawing a line in the middle and a line along the long side. 
if you have a protractor, that line is kind of already there for you. So I'm going to connect my long line and my wide line. Do you all see what I've done? With your flat edge, whether it's that folded piece of paper or the cutting board or the binder that you're using, you're going to connect the long line. So you all seen that I have paper, but I actually also have a ruler. And you're going to connect the wide line. So the, the reason why mandalas are so meditative, it's because they're patterns. So I do these, if y'all know, if y'all don't know this about me, I really don't like flying. I have a very, I'm just super scared when I fly. Um, and it's like bad enough to wear I've like read books about it, um, about how to get over your fear of flying. But what I do is I create these mandalas because you get lost in the pattern. And these are all organic patterns that I've created. We're going to get there in a second. We need to map it out first. So with your protractor, remember we've created the 90 line and the 180 line. And then I want you to carve those lines in half. We're making little pizzas right now. There's a little math involved. And whenever I taught my mandalas and movement workshop, I always had y'all do the math because I don't like math. I'm not good at it, but of course, as an artist, you have to use it every day. And I thought I'd pick the one job, the one career path where I wouldn't have to use math, but I have to use it every day. Some people stop here. They have their 45 degree, or their 90 degree, excuse me, and then their 45 degree. If you want to go one more pi length, or pi chunk, I guess, you would cut this in half again. So, what is 45 divided by 2, Michael? 22 and a half. Is that right? I think that's right. Y'all can comment if it's wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's right. So, I'm eyeballing it because, again, I... I'm not good at math. I'm pretty sure I'm doing this right. <laughs> Basically, don't stress about the middle point because what you can go back and get really, really specific with your measurements. What you do have to be careful of is not crossing the wrong line. So this line connects here. And you can always kind of trek yourself and make sure that this intersecting line hits one point in the middle of the pie you're creating. So remember, now I'm just kind of going along the line. I can tell my middle is already going to be a little bit skewed, but again, I'm not really worried about it. Oh, of course, I forgot a pie. I forgot a pie piece. Thank gosh for my protractor. Pretty, I'm feeling good about this line right here, but again, I'm kind of eyeballing. I've done this enough times that, um, okay, see, this is totally off. I really messed up, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to be like, I feel good about that line right there. So we're going to add a line <laughs> and then I have one more line, but remember print a protractor. They're really helpful. Um, especially when you're doing something where you do want to be specific, but if not eyeballing is fine. So if you've been eyeballing this whole time, try to get north and south, east and west, and then a couple degrees in between. So I have a really specific middle point and I have my layers. So here's what's important. And um, Michael, can you see the layers and everything? All right. So here's what gets important. And I'm going to sharpen my pencil. I chose a harder pencil for y'all tonight so you could see. Whatever pattern, we're thinking about circles now. Whatever pattern you do in this circle, it repeats around the whole circle. Pause. Whatever pattern you do in this circle, and these mini pies, it repeats around the whole circle. Look at this. This pattern is repeated. This pattern is repeated. This pattern has been repeated. So repetition is what makes this mandala so meditative and so, it just, it's very serene. It's very peaceful to be sitting there and just repeating the patterns that you create. These were very random shapes I decided to do. I like to start with flower petals, but you can really start anywhere. So I'm going to start. So look, every pie in my first circle has to look the same. So go ahead. And again, I'm going to keep this video on my IGTV because I know I'm trying to get a lot of information in, in the first few minutes, but I'm also going to upload a time-lapse video of my finished mandala. So. If you can already tell, this is really meditative for me, and I'm hoping for y'all. The first pie, all of the little pies, the first circle, all of the little pies are the same pattern. 
I'm gonna move into my next pie, and remember, same pattern. So I don't know what I wanna choose. I'm kind of feeling something organic, and I'm gonna make it look like, I don't know. I'm gonna make it look like a sunbeam that starts from the center of the triangle. So try to, try to map out, I know this isn't maybe that exciting, and try to have at least a few of the corners touching the levels, the lines of the pie that you're in. So I'm gonna kind of go over mine. Because it just makes it more interesting when you take up the space that you've created for yourself in these pies. So I'm gonna pause and just go over what I've done so far because I know that that was a lot of information in the beginning. So before I go into more detail, I wanna go over one more time how to do what I did. First big circle, map it out. I'm literally using a plate. Medium circle, map it out. Small medium circle, map it out. Smallest circle, Map it out. Print a protractor or just eyeball it and draw lines to all the pies you wanna create. Once you have your outer lines, connect your outer lines. North, south, east, west, and all of the pies in between. You'll get these different variations. So I'm not gonna finish my whole mandala. I guess this didn't really have to take 20 minutes, but I think I was like, I'm gonna do my whole mandala, but then y'all be like, okay, Haley, goodbye. We get, the, we get the idea. So, and you'll keep going. Let's say, I kinda wanna change it up. I'm gonna get really loopy here because I kinda feel like making a very weird mitten. And think about the feeling. Think about what you're feeling. If you, I've, so people have asked me before, Okay, Haley, what shapes do you think I should do? And if I see a lot of this, like pointy triangle, um, it feels like the need for control, change it up and let yourself get a little more lyrical with your lines. If you all have followed my um, figurative, how to draw a figure workshop tutorial, you know that I'm very lyrical and I'm like loopy and, and loose with my lines. So this is a way for you to also let go a little bit. And that's the great thing about the mandala is that it asks us to let go and just dive into this headspace of art and of creation. Think about shapes inside. I kind of feel like putting a circle here. So remember, everything within the circle layer is the same. Oh, look, I forgot. <laughs> catch yourself too and again this is a little messy but I just want to kind of show you the principle and I kind of feel like adding another layer here so I'm gonna do that too does anybody have any questions um, right now while I'm creating and um, any questions about mapping out or math well actually don't ask me math questions but I'll try to help you does anybody have any questions are there any questions coming up okay what do I want to do in here? And think about things that inspire you. Like my fiddle leaf, I love the leaves. This is Octavia. She's a prayer plant. Um, maybe my an animal or um, another shape that you like. But I'm going to do something interesting. And I'm going to make a wave. Wow. Super crazy. Can't believe we're letting her get away with this wave. <laughs> so I'm just really getting crazy. Um... I sound like a little out there, but I'm just having a good time. So, and remember, it, it's okay if it looks a little different from circle to circle, but try to, keep, try to keep the nature of your hand and the gesture. So repeat that feeling. That's why it's so meditative is because it's repetitive. It's if you've ever, so if, if y'all have ever walked a labyrinth, um, you have to, a labyrinth is different than a maze because with a labyrinth, you go in and out the same point. So talk about meditative, talk about repetitive. And I'm gonna maybe make this more like a paisley. So I'll go into that detail more. Um, so my, my shapes are really big. I've also seen people get really small with their shapes and add in like another moon or another little circles or diamonds. Some people get really boxy with their mandalas. So, um, 
definitely take your time. I know the mapping, because I've done this before, the mapping out part is easy for me, but take your time with the mapping out if you need to do it again. And if you want to, and I know people too who redo it so many times until this middle part touches exactly at every point. So if you want to do that because you want that beautiful sacred geometry and the symmetry, then do, do the map. The map part is important. The map is the blueprint. And I think that's pretty much, I'm so glad that was um, within a 15 minute time frame for y'all because I know it's date night and you probably are watching movies and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, this is my um, Mr. Rogers neighborhood chair. So I'm gonna post the time lapse of this video of me finishing my mandala, painting it. So um, after you've mapped it out, consider going over your lines with a darker pen, like an ink pen or something like that to create depth and contrast. I always color mine in with water media, watercolor or acrylic or tempera, but if you have markers, felt tip markers or pens, that's really nice, or even colored pencils. Um, it's okay if you wanna erase the grid lines too. Think about not pushing so hard on your pencil. I was only pushing hard so you could see my paper, but typically I would suggest drawing a little bit light. I would love to see your mandalas. So if y'all would like to take a picture and hashtag Haley from home or Haley, Haley Bowen art, um, I would love to see your mandalas. Um, and then let me know if you ever want to comment or share how this has helped you through this um, time staying inside and isolating. And I know that's really hard for everybody. So um, feel free to share your experience with the mandala and the meditation. So. We have a question. Oh, good. We have a question. Yes. A uh, question from Charlotte Z. Webb. Hey, Charlotte. <laughs> she says, I get stuck trying to pick a new shape. Mm. Something from overthinking. Yes. What would look good next? How do you get over that? That's a great question, Charlotte. Um, so that's where if I get stuck, if I keep doing the same pyramid or same leaf, I take a breath. And then either I look at something and find that nature of the shape, whether it's a square or a circle, but I try to do something opposite. So if I see myself doing something pointy, then that's when I'll get really loose and I'll create like a, I'm just gonna grab this. Can you see this okay, babe? So if I'm doing a lot of like petals and leaves, that's when I get like, I didn't mean to make a frog face, but I made this really organic shape. And I said, I'm so sick of doing leaves and then I started doing these kind of clover things again I did it there and I was like I'm gonna to totally change it up and then I went back to that structure so either I do the I try to do the opposite if I'm doing hardcore lines I'll make it lyrical or um, I'll look at something and say that's the shape I'm gonna emulate and leaves are really good for that because leaves are really pretty symmetrical and they can kind of fit into that pie shape do we have any other questions okay so I'm gonna post this on my IGTV so I can live here um, but get creative and maybe you, you um, it, what would be fun is if you created like a blueprint for a mandala and let a friend color it in um, or you emailed each other your PDFs and you could, you know, Zoom date, color them in, but get creative and I'm hoping that this foundational, fundamental blueprint of a mandala will help you use them um, whenever, like me, when I'm flying or if you're, you know, on public transportation or anything like that. So. Love y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, this is Haley from home, and I would love to see what you've created. Thank you so much.